thank you, Michael, for joining us and, and telling us a little bit more about the courses that you teach here at UCR. Let's dive right into it, and maybe you can tell me a little bit about the track you're in and what kind of courses are on offer in that track. Of course, of course. Thanks <laughs> for uh, letting me talk about the track. It's the Rhetoric and Argumentation track, as, mm -hmm. you, as you know. Um, it has a, a standard first year course called an Introduction to Rhetoric and Argumentation. Mm -hmm. It has two second year courses and two third year courses. So there are five courses in all. I can, I can tell you a little bit about them all. Sure. The, uh, the first year course uh, is about learning to think well and learning to speak well. Mm -hmm. uh, they learn to write well in the writing course, but we also work on that a little bit. Uh, we encounter everything from avoiding fallacious argumentation to um, moving through uh, something called the pro gymnast matter. That's a structured exercises that get incredibly more difficult and longer. That's 2,000 years old. We take that from classical rhetoric. Uh, the students uh, <clears throat> give speeches, all kinds of speeches, short persuasive speeches, pitches, uh, speeches where they praise somebody, uh, speeches where they castize somebody, and they work towards a very long persuasive speech that they give um, you know, uh, by heart. They're, they're trained to move away from the paper uh, and, uh, and deliver good, solid argumentation in a persuasive and coherent way. It's um, designed, originally designed for humanities students, where it's also a prerequisite, but these days there are as many law students and political science students in it, and also quite a lot of medical students as well this past few years. So it really does attract a lot of students because it gives you a, a core skill, core skills that you need not just for learning, but for life. Right, fair yeah. enough. Yeah. And then as we move through the, uh, the tracks, uh, the track system, if students want to major in rhetoric and argumentation, there are kind of two options. If you want to stay more humanities-based, you can go into the 200 level, the second year course, and do stylistics. This is uh, <clears throat> linguistic analysis of literary text, primarily. Mm -hmm. So it's analysis. It's working out why, why texts move us in the way they do. What does the language do to that? It's about playing around with language, really. Mm -hmm. And the 300 level course that follows that is a creative writing course where you're actually putting into practice all you've learned from classical rhetoric in the first year and stylistics in the second year. And then you're producing uh, creative text, usually short stories, uh, sometimes poetry, uh, based on the, the effects of language that you know will have uh, aesthetic uh, uh, emotive effects on listeners and readers. Mm -hmm. So that's more for the humanities students. The other side of the track goes more towards the social sciences students. So at the 200 level there, we have a course called Aspects of Rhetoric. Now, it's got a very, that's a very general title for a purpose. It means we can put anything in where we like, mm -hmm. even bring in guest lecturers and put somebody in there with their own specialization. Uh, the two most recent courses we've taught in that slot have been a public speaking course. So where we've taken students from, you know, basically bumbling wrecks who couldn't speak uh, uh, for two minutes without notes, I couldn't even speak, they were hanging onto the wall and onto the table, bring them to a position where they can deliver a TED talk after 15 weeks. That's uh, speaking extemporaneously, without notes, full of confidence, coherently, persuasively, for 18 minutes. Uh, and it's, it's essentially a course on storytelling mm -hmm. and how you tell stories and how you link them together with arguments and how that works. So it's very empowering. Um, and the other course we taught more recently was something called comparative rhetoric. The rhetoric we teach here is very much a Western rhetoric. It's based on the what we call ergative, argumentative uh, aspects of debate that have come from uh, ancient Rome and ancient Greece. And that's because they were relatively democratic, uh, certainly Athens. Around the world, there are different forms of persuasion. You know, the way people argue less, and there are... There, there are you know, kind of intercultural norms of communication and persuasion in, let's say, uh, in China, in Japan, in India, in the Arab-speaking world, in, in South America, where well, it's completely different. Mm -hmm. So you need to have an awareness of how argumentation works. For example, the structure of an argument in the West is, is logic, you know, it's um, uh, a major premise, a minor premise, and, and a conclusion, and everything has to be uh, logically coherent. Um, uh, the structure of an argument in India is completely different. It has 
to five or six different levels that have nothing to do with connectedness. It's more to do with analogy and metaphor and things like that. Mm -hmm. And that's what counts for a solid argument. Now you need to know that, you know. So it's a very, it's an empowering course. It's a, it's a course that looks beyond the, the Western model, uh, a lot of diversity, a lot of understanding. And we get the students to debate in the, uh, in the, the structures and the methods and the principles of, of, other, of other cultures. So it's very um, rewarding, I think. At the 300 level, we have a course called Persuasion and Social Discourses. This is where we expand on the knowledge of rhetoric and we look at other factors that are involved in persuasion. And here you automatically, very quickly, come into uh, the realm of really social psychology. Mm -hmm. You know, a priming and framing and nudging. A lot of non-conscious as well as conscious uh, aspects of, of persuasion. There's far more focus on the audience, you know, and then you really are in psychology, you know, with the kind of your values and beliefs that lead to, you know, uh, attitudes and behaviours and things like that. Um, and the students regularly do projects where they set out a persuasion um, project to to uh, kind of influence people to, to do better things. So it's, it's kind of an ethical form of persuasion. There are big questions of ethics, you know, uh, uh, around it, you know. Can we convince people subliminally to live greener lives, to pollute less? You know, are we allowed to do that? Are we not allowed to do that? We bring in some ethics from utilitarianism and universalism and we discuss that. So it's, it's very much a... Um, uh, a project-based uh, uh, and also uh, a real journey for the students through the ethics of persuasion because these are very powerful tools you know you can go on and do great harm with them but also great good. Right. It sounds as though the entire track is really meant for students to build a really broad set of skills that they can use no matter what direction <coughs> they intend to go in whether it's medicine or whether absolutely. it's... Absolutely, yeah. absolutely and that's why it attracts students from, from everywhere really. Right. Um, <clears throat> we're even working on a, a, a new 300 level course on communication and leadership, mm -hmm. which also has a big uh, ethical component in as well. Uh, so mm -hmm. that's something that, that could be online in the, in the next year or two. It sounds fascinating. I think a lot of uh, our colleagues would be interested in that. I'm sure they would, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, now you already mentioned some of the connections that yeah. students make. Um, what do you see, because you've been here for a while, what do you see that graduates who've done rhetoric and argumentation, oh, what yeah. kind of fields do they <coughs> continue to, to work in? Well, I can give you two examples. I could give you many, but I'll just give you two. One's the academic example. We have, uh, I could name many students, but I'll just name three if I can. Um, I had a student, um, uh, Fira Feldhausen, who majored in rhetoric and, and literature. She went on uh, to uh, pursue an academic career she did an, uh, a master in, in Edinburgh and she did a PhD at the Children's Literature Centre in Cambridge, where I'm, I'm also a member of that centre. Uh, and now she's, she's a lecturer uh, in, in comparative literature at the University of Groningen. Right. Uh, another one is Ilse Rass. Ilse um, did rhetoric and law and psychology as well, I believe. And then she went to Leicester to do an MA. She went to do a PhD with a colleague of mine at the University of Leeds. Uh, and now she is um, is lecturing in, in, in criminology, the crossover between law and, and literature at the University of, uh, of Leiden. Um, <clears throat> I've got another a, a good student, um, um, Alexandra Bulic. Alexandra is doing, she did her master, she's doing a PhD uh, in Cambridge, and she's absolutely going to be uh, a, a top academic. She's uh, you know top of the tree. So there's the, the academic route, and I could I could have mentioned three or four others that just come to mind. Mm -hmm. And then there's a more practical route. Um, uh, for example, uh, Rose from Kola. Rose did rhetoric with me, and she also did law. And she went on to do uh, a rhetoric major at the University of Leiden and a law uh, a master at um, at Rotterdam. And afterwards, she went to work for the government. She's now working in the foreign office. She's going to be a diplomat. Right. And she's drawing on all these skills of critical thinking and public speaking in the diplomatic world. So she's, she, she's I, I presume she's going to be an ambassador at some stage. You know, she's really on that trajectory. Somebody similar, but not quite, is Arna, Arna Marks. Arna, um, I think he did political studies and rhetoric. He went to the London School of Economics to do his master. Was really, really into speech writing. And speech writing is part of the course as well. You can specialise in, in speech writing. And 
He spent the past four years working for uh, a Dutch minister. He's been her main speechwriter. Writer. She's called Sigrid Kag. Um, and he regularly comes to my first year class and gives lessons to the students about speech writing if they want to get into that profession. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the the ministry he works for is probably going to be promoted in the in the new government. So who knows how how high up Arna will get go? Maybe he'll become the prime minister's speech writer. So there are lots of practical applications uh, for the track. Um, and there are also uh, academic applications. Mm -hmm. And some have gone into law as well. You know, they've majored in rhetoric and law. That seems to be a, a very strong combination. And they've gone into, become lawyers with, with, uh, with a lot of uh, rhetorical knowledge. Right. Yeah. Well, I think you've really uh, given a great perspective on all the different options that students have. They decide to include rhetoric in their program here. So thank you so much for sharing that. You're welcome. It's a pleasure.